Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2019 Ford F-150, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Airlift Loadlifter 5000 air helper springs for the rear axle. But before we get into that, why don't we just take a couple minutes, check these out and make sure they're gonna work for you. This is how they're gonna set whenever they're installed. And they're just gonna fill that void from the bottom of your frame rail to the top of your axle housing. Uh, and that's how it's gonna provide that support or cushion. And these are just essentially going to replace your factory Johns bumpers, which are, uh, which is this piece here. And these are there to essentially just prevent the suspension and the trough from bottoming out. These aren't going to actually give you any additional support or anything like that. And so an airbag in here can really go a long way. When it comes to picking out a suspension enhancement for your truck, you know, there's several of them out there. And really the best one for you is gonna depend on what you're trying to do. So for example, you know, these airbags are gonna work good in, in all situations, but um, ideally I think I would go with these if I'm gonna be pulling something really heavy, like a, a fifth wheel camper or something along those lines, um, or have a lot of different trailers that I pull, uh, just because you, you have a ton of adjustability with these. So you can go from five to 100 PSI, um, and, and kind of find that sweet spot for the particular trailer that you're trying to pull. If you're someone that maybe pulls one trailer every now and again, um, you know, not super heavy, but you're looking for a little bit of extra support, a sumo spring or a timberin might be a better option for you, just cause they're a little more simple. Their bags, you have to maintain them. So you gotta keep five PSI at least in these at all times or damage can occur to the bag. And, uh, and things like that. So really just gonna depend on what you're trying to do. To make adjusting these, as well as maintenance, a little bit easier, you can always grab a compressor, like uh, our customer did here today. Got the Airlift Easy Compressor, which is really popular. It does a great job. Um, it, it makes, you can set it up to where it'll maintain the bags for you, and you can adjust the pressures on the fly from right inside of the truck or even outside of the truck. It has a wireless remote. So um, that's something always uh, worth looking into if it piques your interest. These bags are compatible with uh, most fifth wheel and gooseneck trailer hitches. Uh, so for example, today we actually have a Kurt above bed rail hitch in ours. So it has the side plates here. And the bags give you a couple different mounting options to work with those types of hitches. So uh, if that's your situation, these should work out for you. And these are gonna have 5,000 pounds of load leveling support. Um, so that's just what they can handle. You know, these aren't going to increase your truck's total load carrying capacity. But other than that, you know, it's a nice upgrade to uh, help uh, your towing experience and, and give your truck a little bit more stability whenever you're pulling that stuff around. As far as installation goes, these were these ones weren't too bad. Um, everything went together pretty easy. There's a few bolts that, that are kind of tricky to, to get to, but that's kind of the norm uh, with any airbag set, really, on just about any vehicle. So uh, nothing out of the ordinary there. So as long as you take your time, uh, this is something you should be able to do. Uh, with that said, though, why don't we go ahead and get started on them now. One thing that we like to do before we put the airbags on is do some before and after testing, right? So right now we have the factory suspension and quite a bit of weight in the bed of the truck and truck squatting down. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. And the airbag should help correct that issue and just the overall performance, you know, the ride quality, the steering, the braking, and everything else. So uh, with that in mind, why don't we go ahead, hop in the truck, we'll run through our test course and see how it does. As soon as I hopped in, I could feel that weight back there. You know, the front of the truck's kind of lifting up. You know, not the way I prefer to, to pull stuff around. You know, the bags definitely should help correct that. And going over these bumps, I mean, I like to hit a few of them, get some uh, energy going through the chassis, you know. And as I'm going over them, not as bad as I thought it was going to be, uh, to be honest with you, but there's definitely, definitely some room for improvement there. You know, kind of getting thrown around a little bit. Um, you can almost feel the suspension working hard. You know, it, it's keeping up, but 
not as good as you'd want it to. You know, we hit this bump and it takes a while for, you know, that compression. The compression comes down, but the rebound just really isn't there. So that's kind of how we get that, that sloppy feeling, I guess you could say. That's kind of how it feels. And when the rear end goes over the bumps, it loosens up the front end and, you know, affects your steering and everything. So uh, as far as the bumps go, definitely some room for improvement. So hopefully the, uh, the bags should help out with that. Now what I'm gonna do is some evasive maneuvering. And this is where I notice a lot of trucks, not only this one, um, kind of struggle with, you know, that weight kind of throwing you around side to side. So I'm gonna get through this clearing and pick up some speed. And again, not as bad as I thought, but room for improvement. You know, the truck almost feels top heavy. You know, as I'm turning, you feel that weight kind of push it over and then it takes a while to kind of correct itself and really have to kind of wrench on the steering wheel to uh, get us pointed back where we're wanting to go. And I'm only going maybe seven or eight miles an hour while I'm doing this. So going any faster than that, you know, it's, it's going to uh, intensify that feeling. And, you know, the truck just doesn't feel as planted as it should. Um, and like I said in the past, almost every truck uh, experiences this. And this seems uh, to be where the airbags really kind of shine. Keep it, keep it level, keep it planted, and going where you want it to, which in my opinion is, is uh, you know, more of a real world type test. You know, you're always gonna be making turns and things like that. Um, not always gonna be going over a bunch of bombs, but it's still uh, good to do just so we can kind of compare. Our shield is gonna be held in place uh, with three 13 millimeter head bolts, just like this one here. Pull that one out, and then there's gonna be two just like it uh, up top here. can lower this out of the way and set it off to the side until we have uh, all of our parts installed. Now we can remove our factory Johns pumper, which is this here. In the middle of it, there's a 13 millimeter head bolt. You grab a socket and an extension. and lower this down and set it off to the side as we will not be reinstalling it. Now we can take this included bolt and this is gonna thread up into the nut that the Johns pumper was in. We'll get that started and then we'll come in with a 15 millimeter socket and tighten this down, but we wanna leave about a half inch of it uh, hanging down. So about like that. Now we can grab our upper bracket and these are side specific. So check your instructions, make sure you have the right one. But the way this is gonna work, this part is gonna sit up against the bottom of our frame. These parts will sit on the inside of our frame rail. And that bolt that we left loose, it's gonna go through here and then we can slide this like that. And that bolt will kind of go through this groove. So just like that. I'll snug this down by hand. You want to make sure that you're pushing as hard as you can that way and up. And we'll come in with a wrench here and tighten it down. Now we need to come back and torque that bolt down using a torque wrench to the amount specified in the instructions. Can't really get a regular socket in there, so I just have an extension. And then this is uh, called the crow's foot. And so that should allow me to kind of get in there and torque it down. In our case, we have a fifth wheel in our truck. So we have side plates here on the frame. So we're gonna use a method suggested in the instructions, which is running a self tapping bolt up through the bracket into the frame rail. For those of you that don't have these side plates, 
uh, or an embed hitch. There is another method. You can use a U-bolt to kind of clamp around the frame. So that's uh, how your truck's set up. Uh, you can find that information in there. But with that said, I took a center punch here, ran it up through here, got it exactly centered, and made a mark. And now we can come back with a 516 drill bit and drill a hole into the bottom of our frame. Once you have that hole drilled, you want to take the included self-tapping screw and run it up into the frame. Notice with these, you run it up, it gets real tight, back it out a little bit. Run it up and just continue to do that until we run it all the way up snug. Once it's snug, come back with your torque wrench and tighten it down to the amount specified. On our leaf spring perch, there's gonna be a bracket with some wires attached to it. We're gonna remove that, which is a 10 millimeter head bolt. And pull that out. For passenger side of our truck, this ABS line, kind of clipped in right here. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and pry that clip out. Back over here on the driver's side, this ABS line, I'm gonna just pop that out, the bracket there. Then we're gonna slide this plastic piece off so you kind of pull down on this lightly. And just slide that, slide that off. Remove this little piece of material here uh, that way it'll give us the clearance that we need. Be real careful when you're doing this. Uh, cause all the wires and everything here. Don't want to damage anything. Uh, I'm going to use a multi-tool. I think just probably have more control, but you know, a, a hand saw or a cut off wheel, whatever you find appropriate uh, to get this removed. Take your lower bracket and this is going to slide in and kind of around your leaf spring pack. Push it all the way over, have it sitting flat on the axle housing here. And you want your truck to be, you know, loaded down like normal ride height. So as it, as it would sit driving down the road. And you want to take a measurement from this mounting surface to this mounting surface. And what this is going to do is determine if we need to use the spacer or not. So in our case, we're a little bit under six and a half inches, so we will not be using the spacer. There's a ref something in the instructions you can reference. It gives you the measurements to let you know if you do need to use the spacer. I guess some of these trucks have different suspension packages and one might sit up higher than the other. But in our case, uh, we're not gonna have to bother with the spacer. Over here in the workbench, we can start to assemble our bag. So take your lower bracket off. You know, when we put that on to measure, it was just temporary. But you want to set this up in, in the correct way here. So, for example, this is the driver's side. And so this is going to be the front of the truck. This is going to be the back of the truck. We'll have your front holes here, these slots. And that's what the ones we're going to be using in a moment. But first, you can take your carriage bolts and drop them through. All right. And then you can take your air spring. One side has three fittings. This is where the uh, air fittings would go. So this could be on top. But you want this to, on the bag to be on the same side that our carriage bolts are on. Bottom side. Put your roll plate on. Line that up. And then these are the these holes you want to be lined up with the slots here in the front. So I'm just going to kind of do one of these deals. Let's see if you can get it right on here. Then you can take 
this bolt, split lock washer and a flat washer. Uh, I believe if you have those spacers, they give you some other bolts that are a little bit longer, but same concept here. And we're just going to get these uh, started in place and hand tight. We'll get them just tight enough to where uh, everything kind of sits how it should. But you're still able to kind of move this back and forth and, and be able to adjust it. Flip the air spring back over. So we're on the top here. Take another roll plate. Slide that on top. And then you can take the fitting. And with these, you just want to... Uh, Get as tight as you can by hand, and then tighten it down about another one and a half turns. Uh, this is a 7 16 wrench that I'm using. Let's jack up the frame of your truck. That way it'll increase the distance in between the bottom of our frame and our axle housing. So since I'm on a drive-on lift, just using a pole jack here to, to lift up. Uh, for those of you at home though, you can take your jack and your jack stands and jack it up by the frame uh, to accomplish the same thing. That extra space that we got, we can grab our assembly and work it into place. It is going to be tight, you know, especially over here on the uh, driver's side just with all the stuff going on, but I'm going to find that sweet spot and be able to uh, work it into place here. Now we can take the strap here and feed it up through the carriage bolts. Take a flange nut and we're going to get both of these started uh, in place and hand tight. This bracket here uh, towards the back of the truck, you can take this bracket, line that back up and then take the factory bolt and get that started and snug it down with our 10 millimeter. On the front side of our lower bracket, there's gonna be this slotted hole here and then a hole right there. For this one, you can take one of the included self-tapping screws and get that started and run it down. I have a half inch socket here that I'm using to do that. Just lower the frame down some, kind of close that gap, and then take a bolt, flat washer, split lock washer, the same ones that we used to bolt the bottom of the bag. To drop that through the openings in the top bracket and uh, line them up through the roll plate to the threaded holes in the bag. And this, is, uh, this isn't the easiest thing to do. So you are going to have to have some patience here and, uh, you know, might try a few different type of tactics, you know, whatever works best for you uh, to, to get them started and, and lined up. This is also partly why we left those bolts on the bottom loose. That way, if you need to shift the airbag front or back to make it easier to line up, you have the ability to do so. Well, once you get those bolts started in hand tight, you want to make sure that the bag is uh, sitting up straight, you know, and, and sitting in a position where it looks good because you are able to kind of slide it back and forth since we left everything loose. Um, usually you can get away with just its natural resting position anyway, and then come back and snug everything down. Sometimes these bolts can kind of be a pain to, to get started if uh, you're fighting with it. You know, you can always come back and loosen up your brackets and it gives you some more working room, you know, to be able to get things lined up and, and get them going. So 
Uh, got those started, got the bag positioned, came in, snugged everything down. And at that point, we can come back with a torque wrench and torque all the hardware down to the amount specified in the instructions. And start to run our airlines to the bag. And what I've done is on our hitch here, there's actually a hole already drilled through it from the factory, and it was, turns out perfect. Our file fits right through there. You know, it's out of the way. You can still get your typical uh, air chucks on it to inflate them. And uh, with ours, we're going to be putting a compressor on it, so these are going to be kind of backups anyway. But you can mount these all different places. You know, a lot of people replace uh, the license plate screws with them. If you're going to be using them a lot and you're not going to have a compressor, things like that. Um, you know, a few suggestions and in instructions. But what you're going to do is take your airline, cut it in half, which I'll show you how to do that in a minute, and then feed this through and secure it down. Here's our airline, and I just put a loop in it here and then pushed it right through that hole there in the frame to where we have it running forward. Uh, I did take a piece of wire loom I had laying around and just kind of put it through there. That way the wire isn't rubbing on, on anything metal, you know, it gives it a little extra layer of protection. Uh, so I just continued to feed that up towards the front of the truck through our frame. The airline tube just goes right through that frame where it comes out in this larger opening here, right above our airbag. Again, put another piece of wire in there to keep it protected. And this is going to plug right into the quick connect fitting here. You do want to make sure that you cut the end nice and clean. You want to avoid using a regular pair of snips because it'll uh, kind of kink it a little bit and it'll probably leak. So you want to use a tool like this or even take a, a sharp razor edge, maybe put this on a block of wood, cut it straight down. We got tubing cutters as well that you can use, but the whole point is you want it to be a good clean straight cut, no burrs or anything. So that looks pretty good there. And the way this is gonna work, it's going to plug right in to that quick connect fitting. Over here on the passenger side, this is how this setup looks. Uh, essentially identical to the driver's side setup, you know. And so with that bag all in place and everything, uh, again, you can route that airline. It's all gonna be pretty much the same. Uh, I just ran it right through the frame again and all the way towards the back of the truck where we have it mounted up. Now we can fill the bags up. We're gonna put between 40 and 60 pounds of air in them. That way we can check for any leaks. To check everything for leaks, you can spray down all your connection points and fittings with soapy water. Give it a minute and what you're looking for is for bubbles to rapidly and continuously form. If you see that, you know you got air escaping and you have a leak. Um, if you give it a few minutes and you don't see that, you know everything's sealed up. If you do have a leak though, let the air out of your system, pull the line out of the fitting, uh, recut it, plug it back in, and check it until you verified everything is good to go. Once you have everything wrapped up, uh, at that point you can go ahead, reinstall your heat shield, and raise your spare tire back up into position. Now that we have the airbags on, we're going to run through those same tests and, and see what it does. Uh, I got about 40 pounds of air in them. That seemed to be about the sweet spot, um, but that's one of the cool things. You know, if you need to adjust them, you know, if it squats down too much, throw a little more air and vice versa. So uh, why don't we go ahead, hop in the truck and run through the course. As soon as I hopped in, feels better already. You know, we're not pointing, pointing up into the sky. So riding a little more comfortable and we're going to do, do the same thing here. We'll get going over these bumps and even just over that first one, getting that energy going through the chassis, actually way better, way better. Um, not nearly as rough. You're not getting thrown around. It, it feels good. Actually, the suspension's almost softer. Uh, if that makes sense, you know, it's, before you could you could feel that back kind of slamming down like that. This one it's kind of just floating and coming right back up. 
So definitely an improvement. Usually you don't, usually it's kind of rough, you know, with airbags on these bumps and stuff. But in this case, on this truck, it actually kind of smoothed it out a little bit. So uh, definitely an improvement as far as that goes. So we'll run up here through our slalom course again and see how it feels. Kind of come through this little clearing here. I can pick up some speed and start to turn. And a major improvement, actually. I'm actually going faster than what I was before. I'd say about half as less body roll, half as much body roll. The truck feels a lot more planted. You know, I'm not trying to turn the wheel 100 miles an hour to get us to where we need to go. Uh, it's just a, a lot more manageable, almost like there's no weight in it at all, um, which is a good thing. So honestly, definitely some improvements here. And my thought is whenever you're towing stuff, you know, it adds a whole nother element to driving down the road. And so if you can have something that'll give you a, a little more confidence and uh, make your experience that much better, you know, kind of a no brainer for me. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs for the rear axle on our 2019 Ford F-150.